traditional Chinese route because that's what they were they're yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes. All right. Okay, we might talk a little bit more about your background later on and how you learned to play this. Mm -hmm. I want to jump right into your collaborations with, uh, with uh, Western mu musicians because you're one of these new you know, players who are playing uh, these traditional Chinese instruments with Western musicians. You seem to have mainly been uh, collaborating with jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. So how in the world did you, a Gu Zheng player in Beijing, uh -huh. get hooked up with these avant-garde <laughs> New York jazz musicians? Uh -huh. This is quite a, an interesting thing. Uh, I will have to start with um, uh, my graduate school, Mills College. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I went there, I didn't really know that much about Mills. Um, this professor, this is um, also a famous composer, uh, Fred Rzewski, mm -hmm. and he recommended me, because I was in a festival, he recommended me to either pack my instrument to move to New York, or to, if I want to pursue a uh, grad study, then I should go to Mills College. Okay. And then when I went to Mills, that's where I met, uh, I studied under Fred Frith, uh, Alvin Curran, Joel Leandro, this French double bassist. Mm -hmm. They're all very, very linked <coughs> with the New York, uh, oh, downtown New York scene. And, uh, but were you were you were you there studying Guzheng? No, no, right? I, I, no. I was studying composition and uh, improvisation. Oh, okay. Um, because I'm sure most New Yorkers wouldn't know this thing if they tripped over one. I mean, most people don't know Chinese instruments. Right. Well, right? They, they they probably know the koto, the Japanese oh, version. The koto, the, yeah. The koto. The is so very oh, oh, so that's interesting. So so <laughs> this is kind of the Chinese version of the Japanese koto. Yes. Or or did the Japanese koto come from this? Oh yeah, it, it comes from, from this. this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In the Tang Dynasty, yeah, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you were there studying composition, and you got hooked up with all of these uh, musicians. I, <clears throat> it really happened, and and, uh, and it didn't happen until I. Well, I studied under them, but I still was kind of confused for a while. And uh, when I was, when I played with Cecil, and I played with uh, 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 quite a few artists, and then had a Meredith to come to my presentation composition, and um, I was kind of uh, just uh, a little confused and and then I realized that I need to take advantage of this environment mm -hmm. because my background had been very strictly the conservatory mm -hmm. training style and I really don't need another two three years of the same kind of training as a composer mm -hmm. I really felt I needed to open my eyes and I needed to mm -hmm. find my own voice yeah. so I think Mills was perfect because it really freed my thinking in a way. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get too far into the show without letting the audience hear a little bit of the instrument because it's, it's very bizarre to be talking about music for an hour and not hearing any mm -hmm. music. So uh, if you don't mind, you know, why don't we set up the Gu Zheng here and why don't you play us a, a traditional Chinese piece? Does that sound okay with you? Okay. 